ever hear of the 10 Lost Tribes of Israel? Sounds like an Indiana Jones movie, but it's actually rooted in history. The Israelites were once divided into 12 tribes, but 10 were conquered and dispersed, lost forever. Or were they? All over the world, different communities identify as descendants of these scattered tribes. One of these communities made a home in a remote corner of India. The Bnei Menashe claimed to be descended from the tribe of Menashe. For centuries, they lived in peace, but a recent wave of violence has begun to threaten their way of life. Has the lost tribe of Menashe been in India all along? Once upon a time, the 12 tribes of Israel lived side by side under the same king until 10 of the tribes decided to revolt, forming their own independent kingdom. But this two-state solution didn't last. The Assyrian Empire showed up and destroyed the breakaway kingdom. And the people who lived there, well, some stayed in the land of Israel, but others were exiled, and no one knows exactly where they ended up. Some believe that they had been absorbed into other cultures, but in the Himalayan foothills of Northeast India lives a tribe of people whose oral history and traditions look a lot like ancient Judaism. They call themselves the Bnei Menashe, or children of Menashe, and they trace their ancestry back to the tribe of Menashe in ancient Israel. According to their oral history, they are descended from Israelites who were exiled from their home, wandering from Iraq to Afghanistan to China before finally settling in Northeast India. But no matter where in the world they were, they never forgot their origins. For hundreds of years, the Bnei Menashe lived in the Indian countryside, minding their own business and maintaining their own customs and traditions. Everything changed in 1890 when Welsh missionaries showed up. Soon, the Indian countryside was peppered with Christian schools and Bible study groups. And the people who lived in that countryside, well, many of them bought in, converting to Christianity, studying scripture, and dropping many of the ancient customs they had once practiced. But all their text study revealed something unexpected. The Bible was jam-packed with eerie similarities to their own ancient customs and beliefs. This can't be just coincidence, it can't be. According to their tradition, they descended from a man named Manasseh or Manmasi, who sounds a lot like the Manasseh mentioned in the Bible. And that wasn't the only familiar name. One of their ancient chants sung at funerals or child naming ceremonies <laughs> included a list of their ancestors, Machir, Gilad, and Ulam, who were described in the Torah as descendants of Menashe. The Bible's kosher laws recalled the dietary restrictions they'd followed for centuries. And holidays like Passover, they showed up in their tradition too. The Bnei Menashe were not the only community in India who traced their roots to ancient Israel, but they were the most isolated. For centuries, they had no idea that other Jewish communities even existed. So they were shocked and delighted to see their stories reflected in the Bible. Very quickly, this newly Christian community reclaimed the identity they'd always held. The missionaries who brought Christianity to India had their own reasons to play up the biblical connection. If they could be credited with discovering a lost tribe, wasn't that the perfect argument for colonization? They weren't colonizing, they were returning people to their roots. It's a pretty self-serving argument. But the Bnei Menashe saw things differently. They didn't need Christian missionaries to tell them what they'd always known. Their long, rich oral history and traditions proved that they were, in fact, descended from the tribe of Menashe. Their fling with Christianity had been just that, a fling. It was nothing, a fling wasn't even a fling. Now, they were returning to their Jewish roots. Judaism is a communal religion. It's hard to be a Jew in isolation. Remember when I said that there are other Jewish communities in India? Well, by the 1980s, the Bnei Menashe had learned that they weren't alone. They reached out to one of those communities, the Bnei Israel, eager to soak up as much Judaism as they could. With help from the Bnei Israel, they began studying Jewish texts, building synagogues, and seeking acceptance from mainstream Jewish communities including the Israeli rabbinate. And this acceptance was important for two reasons. First and foremost, mainstream Jewish acceptance signaled the Bnei Menashe's full return to their ancestral religion and community. Like I said, it's hard to be Jewish in isolation. Jewish communities around the world are bonded to one another, no matter what language we speak or what culture we come from. But there's another darker reason that the Bnei Menashe seek acknowledgement from Israel. Roughly 4,500 Bnei Menashe live in India today, but their lives 
aren't particularly peaceful. As two local tribes duke it out for resources and land, the B'nai Manashe have been swept up in the fighting. The fighting is between the majority Mai Tai and minority Kuki communities, and it's left more than 200 dead. The violence has displaced thousands of people, and mobs have rampaged through the region, setting homes and houses of worship on fire. In May 2023, a community member was killed in an attack on his village. The B'nai Manashe are acutely aware of their precarious status as a tiny minority in a society ripped apart by ethnic violence. So what is stopping them from coming to Israel? After all, half of their community already lives there. Well, that's complicated. Israel was created to be a safe haven for Jews around the world. But in order to emigrate, you need to prove to the Israeli government that you have recent Jewish ancestry. The Bnei Menashe's oral tradition certainly points to Jewish ancestry. And so do the genetic tests, which point to Middle Eastern ancestry. But is an ancient oral tradition enough to satisfy the government's requirements? In 2005, Israel's chief rabbi said, sort of. On the one hand, he formally recognized the Bnei Menashe's claim to Jewish ancestry, pointing to their ancient and well-preserved traditions. But in order to be absolutely, totally certain of their status, he also required an expedited form of conversion to Orthodox Judaism. Usually, converting to Judaism is a long process involving a ton of studying. But the Bnei Menashe were already living fully Jewish lifestyles. Their conversion processes were brief and mostly symbolic. And most were excited to formally and officially be welcomed back into the larger Jewish community. Today, thousands of Bnei Menashe live in deeply religious communities in Israel. They serve proudly in the IDF. Many of the men volunteer for the most elite combat units, proud of their status as Jewish soldiers protecting the Jewish homeland. But it's not all milk and honey. For one, as the only visibly Asian Jewish community in Israel, the Bnei Menashe have experienced significant racism from all sectors of Israeli society, especially during the COVID pandemic. They have faced discrimination from fellow Jews and harassment by Arab Israelis. In 2022, racism cost one member of the community his life. Yoel Hangal, a teenage yeshiva student, was stabbed to death after a fight broke out at a party. Police believe the murder was racially motivated. It was a horrific crime, and the former Minister of Immigrant Absorption was particularly outraged by the attack. Penina Tamanoshata is an Ethiopian Jew. She knows exactly what it feels like to have your Jewish identity questioned by other Jews. So she advocates for the interests of the Bnei Menashe community, which include helping their families in India move to Israel. After all, Jews are driven by the concept that kol Yisrael arevim ze la ze. All Jews are responsible for one another. It doesn't matter where we come from, or what we look like, or what language we speak. We share a common history and millennia old traditions. When one Jewish community is suffering, the rest are obligated to help. It's a big ideal to live up to, and we don't always get it right. But it's the only way for the Jewish people to remain strong. The story of the 10 lost tribes is a cautionary tale. We suffer when we aren't united. The younger generation have a message that we all need to hear, and I hope we listen.